Hello, Sheena Douglas here. What you're looking at is a project I've created using a fantastic technique uh, which has created this really fab 3D embellishment with, in this case, a little bit of the a gilding wax from Pebio has made it, I think, look like a hammered pewter uh, kind of attachment to to this really nice glass vase. Cheapest chips, but I think it just transformed it brilliantly. And this technique is one of the most requested techniques I think I may have ever had. People emailing asking if I would tell you how to do it. No, I'd much rather show you, which is why we're doing this. And that's what we're going to do. So this, this tutorial is all about showing you how to create this because it is amazing. I'd love to say I invented it. I didn't. Um, this was discovered by one of my design team members, Fiona Clayton, who um, I think is an absolute gem. I love it and I will be using it for a lot of, lot of months, years to come. Um, so that's one example of what it looks like. Here's another thing I've done with it, just a, transformed a really, really simple box. A really inexpensive, very lightweight. It was a really pale balsa type box that I've coloured using again Pepio products and gel mediums to give this a bit of a glaze. But it's all about this embellishment again, these 3D, which looks like an um, embossed metal uh, effect here because I've used it with the Pebio gilding wax. We're not going to look at this gilding wax too much in this tutorial because I want to do another tutorial just about the gilding wax because it deserves its own time with that. But that's another example. And then a different look but the same technique. One of Fiona's samples using um, the, uh, again, just a really inexpensive frame here, um, a mirror 150 but transformed colour, she's masked and painted and did a fab technique around it but this embellishment here, which I think looks fantastic, is what we're going to be looking at so that gives you an idea what you can, some, some finished examples but really you, there's so much more to do with this so here's how we start, so you start off with a rubber stamp so I have two here, I'm going to do a black one and a, and a white one because for me, I like the black because the black works great with um, with the gilding waxes but the white is brilliant for colouring which I'm going to show you in this video so let's start off with the white so first thing I'm going to do is I've got my stamp I'm going to put it on something that I can lift it up and transport it with because if not it's going to be kind of stuck there because it's going to get all thick and gloopy as you can see I've done this before this will just come off it'll scrub off later I'm not worried about it just an old cutting mat so the stamps there I have got to hand some white acrylic paint now it can be any colour acrylic paint but the thing I love about um, about using the white is it's a great base for colouring and um, if you get the large tubes much better value for money it's the ha thick the um, the uh, dense the, the thick the, the, um, like looks like toothpaste um, when you squeeze it out of the out of the tube rather than the than the um, the flow formula it's the heavier bodied formula acrylic that you want so that's that and I also I'm going to use a gel from Pebio. Now it could be the matte gel or it could be the gloss gel, they both work really well. I would say if you're going to colour, maybe the matte gel is a better option because it's it's less of a glossy finish to all your colouring product to adhere to. So I'm going to pop that to one side for a sec. I'm going to start splodging here using a palette knife. So just whatever, choose your poison, pop again, there's lots to choose from from Pebio. Um, and I'm going to start with a good squadge, splodge, whatever, of the gel. Now, that looks a lot. I've probably put, put too much out, but I'd rather not mix any more. And I want about the same amount again, 50-50 gel to white paint. And then you want to take your, your palette knife or your painting knife and mix it in. So you, with the white, you can't really tell when it's mixed very, so just take a little bit of time to do this. Not too much because it is acrylic based it's, um, and it's gonna dry and if it dries, it's set. That's it, That's the, you can't re-wet it. And that's the good thing about it because it's gonna dry to a really pliable, uh, uh, plasticky type product. So that should be pretty much well mixed in there. And it, it's really good, I like this because I am that messy type that would get so much pleasure out of just doing that alone. So that's good. Okay, non-stick craft sheet's great for that. I don't even wipe this off if it's done and I've finished playing at the end of the day. I'll leave it and then the fun thing is you get to peel it off your mat as well. 
it's sad but there it is right there's the the um, uh, sunflower from my pea infusion sunflower set um, I'm going to mention now and I'm going to mention at the end of the video these videos from now on will have a list of products that I've used and links to where you can get them and also other a gallery of other um, items using similar techniques or the same techniques and they'll all be on my website um, sheena.tv can't get much simpler than that so um, a stays on black stays on I'm going to ink this up because if I want to colour it I want those black lines in there so the black stays on and then I'm going to take the paint and this looks like really pretty scary because it looks like you're absolutely going to ruin your stamp beyond any recovery here. This is, looks the most evil thing you could do to a rubber stamp. But I have to tell you, my stamps have never been as clean since I've, the ones that I've used this technique on. Because the consequence of it is when you peel it off, it actually peels off anything that you've got left on your stamp. So, I should have mentioned that. If you've got any black, like indented where you don't want it on your stamp clean it before you ink it up and do this because it will transfer to the to the um, peeled off part of this which is what it's going to be am I making any sense I'm not even sure but you know stick with it right so can you see how I've put enough on there that I wanted to cover any of the lines on the image if I can see lines showing through it's not thick enough because what happens is when that dries it's going to shrink and contract and that's and it's going to become peelable so um, if, it, if you can see the lines those lines will become weak where the raised part of the stamp is and it'll just pull apart so that's one there let's mix another one let's do the black a black one um, and I'll show you how if you want to use your black gesso you can also use that and that's a really good cost-effective one the only difference being if I was using black gesso I would use a little bit more of the uh, gel to the gesso because the gesso is more of a liquid formula than their thick white opaque paint um, so it's not as strong a binder in there I've found so um, use less of it more of the gel and then mix that in just the same I've totally mixed in too much again so at the end of this video um, or I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to do a couple of other stamps because I'm not wasting it so if that happens just have some more stamps to one side that you know you, you can do this technique on leaves are fab especially ones that gilded just for little embellishments on for wall art or you know again 3d projects to put on glass vases so you see how easily that's mixed up there now the black I wouldn't bother using my ink on there because you're not going to see it it's black ink it's black gesso so just go ahead and splodge it on you want to make sure it's in all the little recesses okay and then smooth it across and there you go so there two there ready to now do the thing you have to be patient which is doesn't really you know link to me very often but you do have to be patient in this case because you have to leave it 24 hours at least don't try and think you can get away with it any sooner because it needs to dry thoroughly or you won't peel it off the stamps um, properly it'll just be a horrible gungy mess so leave it 24 hours do that and then when you come back I'll show you what you've got okay so here we are 24 hours later but not really had it prepared it's actually just been five minutes um, and what you've got this is what it's going to look like see how it's shrunken back it's gone shiny and you can see all the detail in your stamp whereas before it just looked flat that's what happens it contracts it shrinks and it becomes quite durable pretty freely what you need to do this is the tricky bit you need to start it to peel now I've already started this but it you really got to get your nails in there and start picking back the start of one of the bits of your stamp the good thing is rubber stamps is what you're going to do this with not your clear stamps rubber stamps are tough as anything they are made of vulcanized rubber which is really really strong which is why I use rubber stamps because you can use all these different techniques with them so don't try this on your clear stamps um, and you can see how you can start peeling it back now now if you get a little bit where it's broken or you get you can fill that in later that's not a problem so what I've done is I've started peeling this back already can you see so all you do and it's really satisfying actually um, 
I'm one of those people that likes to peel, you know, the film that you get on, on new electrical items and stuff. When there's that film that it's left on the shiny bits, I like to find the shiny bits and peel them off. Again, so sad and I've already said too much. So I'll pretend it didn't, it didn't go out there. So see how it's just peeling it back. If you get any bits where it's just clinging and you, you don't want it to cling, just give it a little bit of encouragement. Now you'll also have noticed, hopefully, you being the observant crafty types, um, that this is a different stamp. I just thought I'd show you what it looks like with different images. The image that I used um, before, you used me put it on the, you saw me use put it on the sunflower from the paint fusion range, and I also used a leaf from the fuchsia from the paint fusion range. This is actually from the little bit floral range. It's the magnolia, and you can see. Look at how white and pretty, but beautiful. Look, it's tough. I'm pulling, I'm stretching it here. It's really, it's a fab thing. And if you did get a little bit of a drop out in there, all you do is when you stick it on your product, you just fill it in with a bit of the white paint, or if it's on glass, a bit of white paint mixed with the gesso, same mixture you used to make it in the first place, or and the same with the black. And then what you do is you trim it with your scissors so trim off these little bits on the outside there's any frilly bits the good thing is there's usually not that much to trim because it actually peels away where it needs to then another thing you can do here's one i made earlier different stamp so you can see another stamp in that little bit floral range the magnolia you can get your spectrum noirs and you can start to do a bit of colory so look see that actually it goes on here really nicely so just the really pale pink here you can even if you didn't like it just go over with some more white acrylic because the acrylic bonds to it because that's what it's made of um so if i wanted to put a little bit of a white tip back on these pe those these little petals I, which i did actually with the one i'm going to show you in a minute you can do that so if you want to use the pink as your shade in but you think oh I've lost the white I think I liked it with a bit more pink use the white white paint it's opaque and it'll put a little bit but you see how easy that is and then you can do something like this so as you can see that there will actually is something that you could put on a clear vase for um, a very shabby chic bedroom it would look really pretty on a glass vase it, and the thing is because they're flexible it's the kind of look like your UT embellishments but they're flexible so they'll bend around uh, you know a, a vase shape or a, a round object and you just stick them on with the same stuff you made to make them or actually don't just use the gel the gel will be enough because then if it dries clear um, if you've got a little bit around the edge you won't see it and it'll dry clear another one I have here the um, this is the um, lily from the little bit floral range and then finally here is the magnolia with the silver gilding wax on it and uh, to me that just looks like pewter or something it looks like metal but there's another video for the gilding wax so watch out for that in the meantime get yourself to sheena.tv that is where you're going to find a list of the products you need to do this technique um, i'll probably even put links on there for you so you can know where to get them if you want to go there and you can get them right away and also a gallery where you can see samples more samples and um, still pictures a bit closer so thank you very much i hope you've enjoyed that there you have it